important part is the setup for your machine. In the industry, the hardest, and in this embroidery industry, the most difficult part to do is the caps. And then the most difficult caps are the Richardson. So that's, you know, that's just how it is. So the reason for that is because the cap itself, and actually let me bring one out that I ought to have here. The reason for that is because you have, let me take this part out. You have this very structured part, right? So you, hear, you see that, how it just pops back up. So when it does that, and the needle starts going down, that movement will move the needle just a little bit and then it won't it will hit the, the needle plate instead of uh, going through the hole. So then that's, that's when you get that issue. Just a little movements like that will cause the needle to break or will cause, you know, even thread breaks or shredding. So my personal opinion is set it up. Your cap drivers, these are your cap drivers here. So the black ones, you have to set them up as slow as possible. So get your uh, Allen keys and and get get your pliers because it's gonna make it easier for you. Watch this. All right, so you're gonna use the long part and you're gonna go right in here. All right, once it's locked in, you grab your pliers, All right? Loosen it and do the same thing for all four. So you have one, two, three, four. Do that. Loosen it. Right, directly from the front, you're going to see how I can move this up. You see how high it is now? Or I can move it down. All right, so this is the cap driver I just took off of the machine so I can show you guys what I exactly what I uh, what I was talking about. You see the screws that are right here? So these are the screws you want to look at that it doesn't scratch the sewing arm and get it as close as possible. If you can get it a hair away from it, that's even better. Look at it, and as you can see, it's way too high right now. So if it's too high, you're going to have too much bounciness on your cap. Hold it here and just bring it down. Now, here I'm touching my sewing arm. All right, just make sure if this happens, you're gonna have registration issues and all that. So just bring it down and now I'm gonna look very closely and I'm just gonna give it a little tap up. There we go. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the other side by the arrow keys and aligned the other screws on the left side to this corner. So now that I align it, I can see it's kind of up a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Okay, so now that I have it the way I want it, I'm gonna tighten it. So let me just tighten one and I tighten the other one on the other side. A good amount of space here. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move it over. Check this side, and I feel like I could bring it a bit lower. I feel like I have about this much of a gap, right? So I just want to bring it as close as possible. So I'm going to do that again. Loosen it. And now bring it a bit closer down right there. All right, tighten, tighten this one as well. All right, that looks good. Let me move, the, move it to the other side. Check this one. All right, that looks good. So now I'm just gonna tighten all of them. Tighten this one. All right, so now that I did it to this one, if you have uh, more than one head, you wanna do it to the rest of them. The next thing I want to uh, go into is my uh, presser foot. So by the presser foot, I'm gonna just do it to the needles that I'm using. So if I'm using needle number uh, four and needle number 13, I'm only gonna do it to those. The needle that I'm going to be doing the 3D puff, for example, 3D puff, I'm going to be doing needle number 13, which is my black. So this means that since the puff, it's a little bit higher, right? I can't put my presser foot all the way down because if I put the presser foot all the way down, then it's going to make, it's going to push down the, the, the puff. So I actually for the puff part, I want to bring it a little bit, just a little bit higher, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to show you that right now. Take this off. It just slides off. You're going to see 
all these screws here. This is how uh, the screw that you're gonna be loosening. So what you wanna do is you wanna go into your panel. So let's go to the needles. And then you have these, uh, you have the 178 for this machine or the tool one. Just press the lowest uh, a point on your uh, uh, shaft is gonna be the 178 in this case. All right, and as you can see, it brings it down. So my presser foot right now, you're, it's, it's a little bit too, too high uh, for a Richardson cap. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to loosen it. Once you loosen it, this thing, you bring it up, down, using the smallest one on your Allen key, put it on the flat side, and then you tighten it. And tighten. Oh, see how it went up? You don't want that. There we go. So you do the same thing to the rest. Just make sure you take this part off. Press the 100 degree button. Comes back up. And slide it in. Okay, move my head over. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press the same button, the lowest point of the shaft. In this case is 178. So as you can see, this one's very low, right? So I don't want it to be too low either because this is the part that's gonna be doing the puff. So let me go ahead and just raise it up a little bit. So I'm going to use the second smallest one that I have, which is a, a, a two, all right? There we go. And tight. All right, nice. All right, so I just wanna to explain to you guys what the presser foot does and the reason why we bring it uh, down. So the presser foot, think about my fingers being the presser foot and this being the needle. So the presser foot does, it goes down and it holds the, the garment down and then the needle goes through it, right? So if the presser foot is higher than, uh, than usual, what's gonna happen is the needle's gonna go down first. And if the needle goes down first, then the presser foot, then the needle is, is, is you know, the needles are flimsy, so they, might, they, they will break. So this is what you wanna make sure. You wanna make sure that the presser foot is low enough so that it goes down first and then the needle goes through it. Grabs the garment, the needle goes through it, and then the needle comes out, and then the presser foot comes out. So that's the point. Because this movement, just this small movement of the garment going like this, it's not only going down, but it kinda, it's kinda going to the side. So if it moves it, then it's gonna hit the needle hole, right, right on the tip, right on the side of the needle hole, and it's gonna break the needle. All right, so the needles are 75 by 11s, the ones that I'm using now. You can, you can go up to an 80 by 12 if you want to. Um, but to be honest with you, if you make these correct adjustments, if you make the presser foot as low as you possibly can without touching the needle plate, the, the cap driver as long as, you, as low as you possibly can so it won't uh, hit the, uh, the sewing arm. Do this, you don't even need to go to an 80 by 12. So let's go over some digitizing tips on how to digitize for an embroidery cap design. Mainly going to be focusing on the caps we did today and the structured caps like the Richardson 112s. Uh, one of the first things that I always look at is where my design starts. So if my design starts in the center seam of the cap, I know I'm going to have issues because the center seam is not only the thickest part of the cap, but it's also the roundest part of the cap. So this will create that bounciness effect and then the needle will start shaking, not be aligned with the needle hole and hitting the needle plate. And that's what breaks needles, right? So the first thing I do is I start either on the left or on the right. Now, the next thing I look at is where my design is moving towards. I prefer it to be going from the middle this time towards the outside because it already pretty much does the, the, the underlay, right? So then afterwards, when you're doing letters or other designs on top of your underlay, then you're going to have that push away from the center. And this way you won't have any of that, you know, bubble. The next thing I like to do is I like to make sure that my underlay is the first thing. I do a lot of my designs and I have borders on it because it just looks good on the cap. But when I do the borders, 
I leave them for after my underlay is already done and then I mix the stitches so I overlap them. This is because I don't want to have any registration issues. And then the next thing I do, I make sure that I have, if I have any corners, make sure that I have some type of enclosed on those corners, right? So the puff itself, it's actually rip off. So you don't have to cut around it. You just, once the design is done, you just rip it off. So if the needles don't go and stitch over that area, that open area, it will not cut the foam. So then you will have to cut it yourself. And most of the times you won't be able to cover it. So my next step, if you're doing a very large design, uh, I like to make sure that I don't have all my threads the same, all my stitches the same. Uh, for example, if I have the same type of stitch going towards one way, either left or right on all of my design, the garment will slowly start to shift. So if I have one going towards the right and then whatever's on top of that, I want to have it pushing a little bit towards the left. So this way I can compensate for that garment being pulled over to the right. So these are just some general tips. So uh, we're actually going to be making another video in the future and we're going to be going through every little detail, taking our time with you. So just, you know, wait for those videos, like, subscribe to our channel. This way you won't miss them. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'm testing the, uh, the design. I wanna make sure my design is properly digitized. Uh, and to not spend money or anything like that, what I'm doing is I'm using just a stabilizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm using one head uh, just to see the design itself, right? To see my tensions and how many, you know, if I have thread breaks or, or tails, just so I don't have to go back once I'm running my 100 hats or five hats, whatever you're doing. You can let it run right now, it's running out a thousand. It's gonna be running out a thousand when we're doing the Richardson caps as well, the 112. And, and that way we don't have to go back. No tails, no thread breaks, none of that. All right, that's it. Let's take it off. Rip your, uh, your foam off and all right, not bad. So, so you can see, yeah, this is not bad at all. After we apply some heat to it, then all the foam is gonna, all the threads are gonna uh, sink in and the foam is gonna be nice and, and tight. Um, like always guys, you can see, since we're only using stabilizer, this is okay. Uh, once we use the Richardson cap, you're not gonna see uh, that, you know, this kind of like sinking in. That's just because we're using stabilizer. But it looks good. I think this this is the winner. So now we're gonna be doing the hooping. The hooping is the most important part of all. The first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that the bottom piece, it's in. So just make sure it's under it. We're gonna bring it up to this metal piece. Now this metal piece, as you can see here, this there's a uh, line, right? This line will tell you where the center of the cap is, right? So in this case, this will be the center. Once you put it in, I like to grab it through the lip bring it right under it. And now I want to make sure that my cap itself doesn't go over this metal piece. Why? Because what this does is that it stops it from moving forward, right? So if you have it moving forward, you're gonna have, when it's embroidering, you're gonna have uh, registration issues and you're gonna have needle breaks, okay? So make sure that it's not over it, that it's right on it. So if I'm pushing it forward, it's not gonna go anywhere. I like to, get the lip completely out from both sides. So I'm gonna get it from this side and I'm just gonna get try to get the whole thing out, right? Do the same thing on the other side, the same thing you just saw that I did here. So I grab it from this strap here and then I like to pull it down. So what this does, once I do this, it gives it less movements on the top. Let me bring this completely out so I can get the most grip that I can. This side as well. Okay, now I'm gonna go all the way around and I want to make sure that I get it on the brim. Most of you guys know this, right? So if it looks like this, that's not good. If just a little bit, that, just like this, it's still not good. It needs to be right on the brim. So once it's on the brim, you always lock the first one, which is this one on the side. This will not let it move back or forth, right? So no registration issues there. And then you wanna lock this one. Now, for me, this is, out of the whole thing, the most important part. It's this part right here. 
So right now, as you can see, since we were testing on stabilizer, I had to bring it all the way down. All caps are different, so they're all even Richardson caps. You could have one model or the other model, and they're all gonna have different thickness. So you're always changing the tension of this, okay? So you just get a regular screwdriver, all right? A Phillips screwdriver, and then there's a screw right in here, right? So once I put the screw in here, I loosen it, and I bring it up, in this case, I'm bringing it up, and then I lock it, and now I'm gonna bring it down and tighten, right? I'm gonna tighten, make sure it's nice and tight. Don't strip that screw, but just, you know, hand tight. And now what I want to do is I want to bring this up, but when I'm bringing this up, I like to hold it. You gotta hold the front. If not, your cap is going to slowly move towards the right. It's gonna shift over. It doesn't need to be to the point that it hurts your fingers, your hands, or anything. You just wanna have it as tight as you possibly can, okay? So it's not gonna hurt my fingers. I could just do this and it's not gonna lock. It's not gonna hurt my fingers. But as you can see, it, it did apply pressure on it, right? So you heard that, that sounds very tight. All right guys, as you can see, we didn't put any stabilizer in this cap. Uh, it doesn't need any stabilizer at all. Uh, some other caps, for example, they're flimsy here. Then yes, you might wanna put it in those, but not this one. This is good the way it is, as you can see. It's not, it's not gonna move anywhere. It's not gonna get crumbled up or any of that, okay? So, and also, I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't put any clips back here. Uh, there's no need to put any clips back here because this is also stable. And this is just because this is the Richardson 112, and these are the most complicated caps in the industry. There's things that you need to do to make this work. So this is it, I'm gonna get it, take it off, let's rip this out, take all these little ones off, do any snippings if you need to do any snipping, if not, just a quick one here, one here, that's it. Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna get the lighter and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn uh, the, all this, so uh, the thread, so it gets stuck uh, inside. So it pulls it inside pretty much. All the foam, the threads, they all get nice and neat. So that's, that's what I want to do now, um, just so you can see how it looks right now. Put this over here. Right? If you need to do any snippings or anything that you need to do, let me get the lighter so it looks neater, all right? 
So it looks very neat now, but I still want to get the lighter so you guys can see how it'll look. Make it nice and tight in there. Good. Do the head now. If you have a heat gun, you could do this with a heat gun as well. It's actually easier and faster, right? So any little tails that you can't get with your, uh, with your snips, this will burn it off and it'll make all the edges nice and crisp. It'll look very detailed and that's what you want to see. All right, one more round and that's it. Oh man, this is nice. Here we go. All right guys, so as you can see today, we did a total of eight caps, running at a thousand stitches a minute, all Richardson 112s. The design was a 3D puff design, had around 19,000 stitches, took us about 20 to 25 minutes between the color change and the trims, had a total of 11 trims. All of this was possible because of the adjustments I made to lower the presser foot and to lower the cap driver also on the 3D puff needle, I raised the presser foot just a tiny bit. We also went into the digitizing and adjusted the digitizing for caps. So really, anybody could do this. You just need to know the proper steps. So by that being said, I encourage you guys to go ahead and follow the steps I made, do all the adjustments, make sure your digitizing is correct, and have a very productive day. I'll see you guys next time.